some of the things I want to um, to highlight in this section um, that I want to for us to look at how these concepts connect from fractions from whole numbers to fractions or the concept of units so and also how fractions are numbers and and equivalent fractions um, addition and subtraction with fractions and a multiplication and division with fractions um, now here's a, a list from from um, the Common Core State Standards, standards related to this, and it shows uh, fraction standards from each grade level um, in sort of um, abbreviated form here. And, and even if your state's not Common Core, um, these links uh, and these kind of spacing, the the order of the content to be developed with fractions over the years is pretty consistent in, in all state standards um, and these standards here provide a nice direction as to some of the places where it makes sense to build fraction concepts on the foundation of whole number concepts. On this chart we can see several places highlighted in red or kind of like orange I think uh, that are prime places for connecting fractions with whole numbers including places where the common core standards actually explicitly state that work with fractions should be linked to and, and built on prior under, understandings with whole numbers. Um, also notice um, that in purple there I kind of highlighted uh, there's a yearly direction in the standards to use visual models. I just kind of wanted to emphasize that since that's what we just emphasized here in the webinar. All right, so that first thing, units. What about units? Well, with place value, we have all whole number units based on the ones unit. That's the central unit value. Um, tens are ten ones bundled together. Hundreds are ten tens or one hundred ones bundled together, etc. Uh, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths, etc., should also be seen in relationship to ones as part of the ones unit. Fractions are units as well. Halves, thirds, fourths are all parts of a ones unit. The denominator, I'm sorry, the denominator tells us the unit. If the denominator happens to be a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000, for instance, for instance, then the fraction easily converts to a decimal representation. But either way, the denominator is a unit and consistently part of a ones unit. And this is the idea that a ones unit is partitioned into smaller units. And by the way, any fraction with uh, with a one in the numerator is actually called a unit fraction uh, for this reason, because the fraction is exactly one unit of whatever the denominator is. And as I mentioned before, I'll just re repeat again how important number lines are, that, that, that kids need to understand that fractions are numbers, that you can count them just like you can with whole numbers. and the work we do on number lines, putting them on number lines, really keeps reinforcing the idea that fractions are numbers, they're quantities, just like num whole numbers are. Now equivalent fractions, I want to talk about that here in a couple of different ways. First, I would just want to point out uh, uh, the idea of how we make equivalent fractions, and, and this is built on um, whole numbers, and I just first remind you of the multiplic multiplicative identity property. You know, you may not remember the name of it, but the idea, I, everybody I think is pretty clear on that any number times one equals the same number. So 18 times one, no, that equals 18. This is a very simple property, but it's actually a very, very important property with not only whole numbers, fractions, but throughout algebra. And that's throughout middle school and high school and actually into college level mathematics. This very simple property plays a huge role all the way through. Now with fractions, the property works the same really. So two fifths times one, that still equals two fifths. However, um, the end result doesn't always look the same with fractions. That's kind of the answer. With whole numbers, of course, we multiply a whole number by one. It looks just like the same whole number in the end. But with fractions, um, it really usually looks different. Suppose uh, we're, we multiply two-fifths by three-thirds. The result looks like a different value. I mean, it is a different fraction, but it's not a different value. Then that's the difference here. And um, this is where we need to help students. Um, we need to help them really focus on the concept of multiplying by one, that the value of the quantity stays the same, the value stays the same. Using visuals such as that paper folding, looking at a number line, and using uh, what a fourth grade teacher I know calls multiplying by the big bad one, um, the result is another fraction that is equal in value to the first. So just like with our paper folding when two-fourths and four-eighths are the same value as one-half of the sheet of paper. 
two fifths times a one in the version of three thirds equals six fifteenths, it's the same value. So this type of illustration and phrasing with the big bad one and the connections to other concrete and visual representations um, helps students uh, really pro um, hold on to remember and, and make sense of this mathematics. All right, another thing about equivalent representations that I want to talk about is to connect the idea of um, connecting this idea of equivalent fractions to this really big idea uh, in mathematics that there are multiple equivalent representations of numbers. It doesn't matter what kind of numbers those are, but there are always multiple different ways to write it. Um, the students can build from recalling uh, even with whole numbers, such as 400, 451, that it, that can be expressed in many ways, as you see just four of them here. And looking at that fourth one, D there, we can see it's expressed as 300s, 14 tens, and 11 ones, and which is actually a necessary way to represent 451, um, because what if we wanted to subtract 273 from it, then that's how we're going to represent it, because we're going to need to regroup the hundreds and the tens and the ones to do the subtraction. Well, likewise with fractions, they can be represented in multiple ways, as we can see here. Um, but it, um, if we needed to do something like subtract, um, you know, two fifteenths from two fifths, uh, then it helps to represent two fifths differently as really six fifteenths. Uh, so rewriting values into different equivalent forms. That's a big idea in math, and uh, from operations, whole numbers to fractions, and, and well beyond, as I mentioned before. Therefore, it's really important to make a big deal of this big idea in math and facilitate students seeing how the idea that any quantity can be represented in multiple ways translates from whole numbers to fractions, and that that is a general idea, not a specific um, procedure or skill that just happens with fractions.